Hey, what's up guys? It's Jared from The Mystic Guy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the combat veteran mindset. I'm just going to share what goes on through a, you know, a combat vet's mindset just so the general public and people can understand them better. But also this video is for all you combat vets out there so you guys can just understand the fact that you know other people know what you're going through and what's going on in your mind and so maybe you can relate to your family and your friends a little bit better because they can relate to you because they understand some of the things that are on your mind that are hard to communicate so let's get into it all right number one combat vets get upset angry frustrated pissed off uh, when people complain <laughs> so uh, we've we've been in combat you know we've trained in the snow and the rain we've slept outside for days at a time we've went hungry we eat MREs for seven months straight fight every day uh, you know we're, we're at post up until you know the, the three o'clock in the morning or or 24 hours straight we go on patrol in the hot sun or sometimes in the freezing cold so we've learned to survive the elements and we've learned just to take everything in stride and whatever comes at us just comes at us and we just accept it we might complain a little bit because that's just how you get through the day but then when you come back home you look around and you know you hear the girl complaining in the Starbucks line because her latte isn't foamy enough it just kind of rubs you the wrong way so every combat veteran knows this uh, when he hears people complaining uh, it just pisses him off because you know we've survived in environments with so little but also we've seen uh, in third if you know most of us have been through third world countries uh, so when you go there you see how other people live and how little resources and opportunities they have and then you see how blessed we are in the United States so when you hear all this complaining and this uh, you know perception of lack uh, that, that goes on in America, then it's uh, it's upsetting to them. All right, number two, combat vets get annoyed or upset when they hear a person say, oh, I was going to go to infantry or I was gonna go into infantry or combat, but I didn't. And then they give you some long drawn out reason why they didn't actually go into infantry. We don't care why you went into infantry or why you didn't go into infantry. It doesn't matter to us. The fact is that you just didn't do it. No harm, no foul. In fact, a lot of us kind of went into infantry and then we're like, shit, we didn't know what we were getting into, but it was too late at that point. And no one, I'm sure not a lot, you know, not a lot of Marines out there regret it, but it's a, it was a grind when you're in it. But, you know, don't come to us and give us this whole long drawn out story of why you didn't go to infantry. We don't really care. We, you, we just don't. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you play Call of Duty, that doesn't make you qualifiable to go into combat or to, you know, to fight to fight in war. Some people will say, oh yeah, I could have done that, I play a lot of Call of Duty. At that point, I just turn around and just, you know, I don't even listen to them or pay any attention to them. I don't care, uh, you know, if you can play a video game, I could play video games too. And then I went to war and I was like, wow, war is nothing like a video game or a movie. It doesn't even compare. So, uh, don't do that. <laughs> All right, number three, combat vets get really irritated when you ask them if they've ever killed anyone. Uh, this is a really intimate experience, and intimate in the sense that, I mean, it's very personal. Uh, when you take someone's life, it impacts you at an unbelievably deep level. Uh, you definitely lose a part of your soul or spirit, I think, when you do that, and you have to do certain processes, shamanic processes, to get that part of you back, because it's very damaging. But at the same time, when you have that connection with a person, um, you form some type of, I'm not sure, there's like a bond there. You, I, I know in my own experience now, when I think back to some of the things that I did, um, you know, I don't have any guilt over it anymore. I'm not, I don't hate myself over it. Um, but I, you know, I, I was sorry for that experience. I was sorry for doing what I did uh, because I recognized eventually that he's just another human being as am I. And we just both, life just brought us to this point and then you take another man's life. And it's really, really personal. Um, so if you don't, if you don't know if a person's done that or not, it doesn't matter. Don't ask them. If they want to talk about it, then be willing to listen. Uh, but you know, don't go up to a person and just be like, "Oh, wow, you were overseas. You were in combat. Oh, did you kill anybody?" Because uh, they don't want to talk about that. And if they do, they'll let you know and they'll open up to you. Just. If just be willing to sit with that person and give them an open ear because sometimes they do need to talk about it but they're not sure how to they're they're not sure how they'll be perceived I didn't want to talk about it for a really long time because I thought you know people would think I was some sort of animal or something wrong when in reality I was just 
a guy trying to make it through war and get back home alive. Alright, number four. All combat vets know that media and all the coverage that it goes on overseas and in the world is just a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of lies, it's a bunch of rumors and hearsay. How do we know this? Well, we've been in major operations and if you've been in a major operation then it was probably covered by CNN or Fox News or any one of the other major networks. And so what I found was I was over there and I was on the ground and I knew what was going on because I was a part of it and then I got back and I watched all the media coverage and it was not what was happening on the ground at all. There might be some instances that are similar but for the most part a lot of it's just really really uh, exaggerated and blown up to get people to look at it because they're media companies media companies get paid by ads you know by other companies for ad revenue and that's all it comes down to so all the stuff is really just blown up and exaggerated mostly not true so if you're trying to talk politics or any of that other media stuff with a combat veteran, uh, he's probably not going to want to even talk about it because he knows it's just a waste of his time and it's a waste of your time and it's all false. Alright, number five. Just because some combat veterans are rough on the outside doesn't mean that they have a sweet and sensitive side. Um, in today's modern warfare, a combat veteran, they were forced to be put into in two positions. One, you had to be ferocious and a warrior in one second, and in the very next second, you had to be very calm, cool, and collect. This was because you had to work with the general public. It wasn't like old school warfare where you just fought all the time with other human beings. No, you had to work with the people. You had to work with the community. The whole thing about modern warfare is winning the hearts and minds of the people. So you could be on patrol talking with a person or you know, having fun or playing with a kid and then all of a sudden, you know, shots snap off. And then all of a sudden you have to turn it up, you know, you go from zero to a hundred in the course of a split second to do what you have to do, take care of the fight and take care of the enemy in any way possible. So a lot of uh, combat vets have this rough side on them. You know, I did for, for quite some time and it, you know, that doesn't mean that there's a really awesome, uh, sweet and sensitive person on the inside who truly cares. So when you see them on the outside, if they seem a little rough around the edges, give them a little time, allow them to warm up to you and you'll see that uh, they're really truly amazing people on the inside and they got a lot of love to share. <laughs> Alright, number six. Combat veterans have an unbelievable amount of passion and range that can be just channeled in a moment. And it can, it's so powerful and they can just flick it on like a switch. Now people look at this in the regular world and they think, oh man, that guy's bipolar. But it's not that at all. In combat, like I was saying before in the last example, we had to be with the community, we had to be you know, talking to people on patrol, figuring out what was going on around us, and engaging with people on a human level, and then in the next second we had to turn it up. You know, just like that to fight the enemy. So we learned and, you know, we were trained, but then also conditioned by those combat experiences to just turn on the drop of a hat. So if you see, you know, maybe you're married to a combat veteran or your brother or uncle or, you know, a father to one, and you might see your kid or your, you know, your husband or whoever it is, you, you see that combat veteran just flare up real real quickly and it's so intense and it's scary because there's so much emotion there there's so much anger or whatever it is there's so much coming up um, but know that you know we do have control over where that goes we we do have you know it may not seem that we have control because it can be so intense but we have control as to where we can channel it because that's what we are trained to do we are trained to act quickly to get that surge and then channel it towards whatever outlet we needed to to accomplish the mission at hand which was you know you know engage the enemy and eliminate it so if you have you know someone you know who has this and, you know they're a combat veteran and you see them do this uh, quite often just you know it's it's okay to be scared if that's your natural reaction it's totally understandable but know that that person uh, does have a lot more control in terms of where they want to channel it you know sometimes with I remember uh, my last girlfriend I would get really really upset and I would just I would explode you know just right there I would explode I get really loud and angry and uh, but as soon as I did that I looked at her and I said hey I just want you to know in a very calm and cool voice I said hey I just want you to know that none of this is directed at you this is all this is all my stuff this is all me and she couldn't she couldn't understand it she didn't she was still scared by it and I remember one time she told me to drive her home after I like got really mad and I wasn't freaking out at her I was in my own thing but she got really mad and scared 
and uh, and that was one of the things that I realized I couldn't be with her anymore. But that's a whole nother story. So you know, when they have these freakouts, you know, you, they have these anger things. Uh, just know that it's just the moment, and two is as intense as it is that they do have control and they can channel where where it goes. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. I hope for all the family members of combat veterans this is helpful. I know it will be, and I know for the combat vets out there that this will help them out just to understand their own mind, and you know maybe it can help you voice some thoughts to your family that your family doesn't really know. All right, guys, I wish you all the best. With light and love, my friends, namaste.